what do you say to people who have somewhat settled down or at least have kids that have school commitments and want to play sports and, you know, how I hang out with their friends? I said, bring your son over to Asia for like a spring break, plus spend an extra week or two. I promise you he'll, he'll learn a lot more going around Asia about how the world works, about opportunities, about the future, quite frankly, than he's going to learn sitting in school in Chicago. Okay, I can promise you that. What do you say to people who have somewhat settled down or at least have kids that have school commitments and want to play sports and, you know, how I hang out with their friends? Well, look at it this way. This may not the best argument to a, a Bitcoin investor, but, you know, I live next door to a number of embassies or, you know, down the street. Those ambassadors or those embassy workers, they move every couple of years. They live all around the world. Is anybody, you know, shaming them that they ruin their child's life? No, we call them public servants. We hail them. They get a gold watch and a pension when they retire at, you know, 43 or whatever it is, you know, after their seven hour work weeks. And so, you know, people are doing it, right? I mean, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank uh, lived all over the world. He had a stepdad who uh, worked for, I think it was the UN, and they were all over the place. And I think it gave him great experiences. Michael Saylor, I just had on my uh, show, you know, grew up moving around as, a, as an army or an Air Force brat, uh, different places, U.S. and overseas. I think that shapes people. And so, you know, I can't speak to everyone's spouse. I had one guy, he said, my wife will only move to Spain. I said, great. Um, so what can you do? And I guess at least he's out of the U.S. system. So, you know, that's something that I screened for when I wanted to have a relationship. Um, if you already have kids, here's the thing. And this is why one of the baby steps I tell people is just do something. Again, maybe not the best example for a crypto guy. Go to Armenia, go to Georgia, go to Ecuador, put 500 bucks in a bank account and get comfortable not only that you went there and that you didn't get murdered, as, as CNN will tell you, but that you go home and your 500 bucks is still there. And you can use it and you can take it out of the ATM and you realize that the world pretty much functions the same. There are plenty of countries that speak English or you can learn Spanish or you can get by it, whatever. There are schools. I, this is shocking to some people, but most places on earth, they do have schools. And by the way, better schools, better schools. I mean, you, you look at the U.S. rankings. What are they like, you know, 5,800th in terms of math and science? I mean, I don't know. I talked to one of my friends. I said, uh, he's, he's uh, I don't know, he's early 40s and he's got a 16 year old son. I said, bring your son over to Asia for like a spring break, plus spend an extra week or two. I promise you he'll, he'll learn a lot more going around Asia about how the world works, about opportunities, about the future, quite frankly, than he's going to learn sitting in school in Chicago. Okay, I can promise you that. So, uh, you know, I think that where there's a will, there's a way. Obviously, when it comes to one part of a relationship doesn't want to do it and the other one does. Uh, I'm, I'm not Dr. Phil, but that's something you have to work out. As you said, you've gone all in on this, obviously. You've been doing it for quite a while. And to some degree, you're, you're going through all the hardships so that your clients don't have to, right? Yeah. But how difficult is it to manage properties in six countries, you know, to, to juggle all of this if you didn't have a company like yours to help you manage it? Um, I think it's potentially very difficult because, again, you have to learn that things don't often work the same way. Now, they may work better in some places, but it's not the same, right? Um, so I have a home in Tbilisi, Georgia. I've talked about it as an up-and-coming market, very affordable place to live, especially if you're trying to keep your living costs low. You can, you can go there and, and uh, live like a king for a thousand bucks a month if you're single. And, um, you know, I set up all my bills on auto pay through the bank. That was very easy. But in terms of finding property managers, other countries having things managed, I mean, everyone does things differently. Some countries, people are late all the time. Other countries, you've got to, you know, ask them a second time. And so, you know, I think that uh, I was just telling my wife the other day, like I said, you should write a book about all these renovations that we've done and like all the mistakes that you make and like all the things that people don't know. And um, I mean, the world does not function like the U.S. I know that scares people, but I think that the opportunities are worth it, especially if you're talking about someone who's making the kind of money crypto people are making. Um, I, I think it can be challenging, but I think it's a matter of either you, you hire someone who knows what they're doing uh, or you just go through it and take the slings and arrows yourself. I, I don't think there's any shortcut, like anything in life. You didn't get 200,000 200, Twitter followers by just showing up one day. You put in the work. 
Sure. Is there a threshold of wealth for an American where you kind of start to see people inquiring about this or becoming more interested? Is there a certain level of wealth that they need to have where all of a sudden they find the taxes too difficult to, to, to stomach or that they just find the um, regulation and the bureaucracy too difficult? There's two answers. So in our company, generally we look for if you're running a business, you're making at least half a million dollars a year at a bare minimum, or you've got a net worth of a couple million dollars if you're in crypto or you sold something, whatever. Um, that's the standard for us because as someone pointed out recently, you know, having 32 people, many of them doing research, building connections with banks and tax advisors and keeping up to date and reading, I mean, it's an expensive infrastructure to maintain. And certainly, you know, as they said, I'm, I'm not selling that service for 500 bucks that I work with you for a month and we execute for a year and all that. Um, so could you do it for less? Yes. Uh, the question is, um, you know, when is it painful enough? Let's be honest. Uh, California has seen a max exodus. Still tens of millions of people who live in California, including some very wealthy people who apparently, despite turning on their televisions every day and shows like yours and in mine and hearing that everyone, it seems, and his brother is going uh, and getting the heck out of California, they're still living in their place in Malibu, happily paying the tax. They don't have enough pain, so I don't know that I can help them. But if you're sitting and you're saying, I'm paying 50 grand a year in tax the way I did my first you know, year or two in business and it became real and you're screaming in agony, uh, there's a solution. Your ROI is not gonna be as fast as the guy who's making 20 million a year and just has to move to Dubai. Um, but if there is enough pain to motivate you to do it, all I would say is, again, don't take shortcuts. Um, if you're an American, you got to be careful. If you're not an American, you want to check out of your tax residence properly. And so I think some people who, you know, who are new to this, I think part of the reason we've been so successful with people in the eight, nine, 10 figures is because they know what it takes. They know what it's like to work with people who suck, right? And so if you're thinking you're, you're going to get out and it's going to cost you 300 bucks, I think you're probably going to get a suboptimal result. Um, and so I, you know, I would caution you against that. And I would say that after 17 years in business, you know, there's, the, there's a, a value in, in paying a premium for something that is as opaque as this, whether it's with me or anyone else. Um, so that's, that's my word of warning. Yeah, eventually you learn that uh, you get what you pay for. It's such an old adage, but in incredibly true. It's funny you talk about home renovations. You don't hire the cheapest person to renovate your home in, in a random country, right? You, you hire the person who can do it well. You're correct. We just met the guy here in Bogota, and he's a fantastic guy. And you know all the complaints people have about culture in this part of the world, which we've seen. I mean, try and email an attorney in Panama. If you get a response in three weeks, you found like, probably a keeper. If, 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 not, if they keep doing that at that pace, they're a keeper, probably. This guy has none of the problems that you would associate um, with hiring a guy in Colombia. And I'm looking at my wife and I say, like, we spent how much? But I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I'm doing well. I want to live in comfort. Do I want to spend the extra thousand dollars on the nicer floor? Yeah, I do. Because I think that that has an impact on performance in your business and your investments. It's why I don't feel good in Airbnbs that that are poorly you know, decorated and they have you know, one tiny little painting on the wall. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's something that as an entrepreneur I've learned over the years, right? Is that um, you sometimes think, I could have done this for less. Yeah, you probably could have, but time is money. Um, and, and so that's, you know, experience speaking, I'm sure you're the same. Yeah, and you know, I was uh, influenced by like many, Tim Ferriss's four hour yeah. work week, right? This is when I first was sort of introduced to the concepts that you're discussing now. Um, and, you know, it's just a, a very, very attractive thing. But when he, you know, said in the book, hey, listen, hire that assistant, mm -hmm. you know, have someone do those things that you just don't want to do, free up that time, it's worth the money. It's a really powerful lesson as you gain the means to do so. Well, I would say take whatever you're going to make this year, divide it by 2,000. That's if you're an entrepreneur, I'm surely, you're surely working more than that, but that's how many hours are in an average person's you know, American work week. You know, what's the value of your time? If you want to make it an, a mathematical equation, if your time's worth 76 bucks an hour and someone's charging you 90, say you'll do it yourself. If they're charging 40, you should jump at that. I think the benefit of what I'm talking about, go where you're treated best, is we have people in four different places. We've got our biggest office. We have our own office in uh, Belgrade, Serbia, with about 18 people. We hire smart people. Uh, it's tough to find good people, as it is anywhere. 
But even though we're going to have some people who are going to make fantastic salaries, I mean, probably the U.S. equivalent of, you know, a couple hundred grand, several hundred grand in their 20s um, as employees, um, you know, we start people out at kind of a slightly above average wage. And so we can take more risks and then promote them quickly if they're good. Uh, we've gotten better just, again, by doing it, high, it, understanding the culture, understanding what to weed out. And just basically, I mean, in the last year, I think our, our stick rate has been like 80%, which is a great improvement from years past. Um, but, you know, we're able to take those uh, risks a lot easier in terms of saying, you know what? Uh, I want to hire someone to do government affairs in Central Asia. You know, hire someone for seven fifty, and if they do well, you know, a month, put them up. If they do well, you know, you put them up to a couple grand. They're living like a king, and then you bonus them from there, kind of thing. So that's where the Tim Ferriss thing really starts to become more effective. It's the same in trading or investing. I, I spoke to uh, Alan uh, Gorin recently from Draper Gorin uh, Home, and he's a venture capitalist, and he said the same thing. He's basically start everyone low, you know, you set the expectations low, you double down on the good ones and you got the losers, right? I mean, it's the same with uh, trading or investing. You just take your loss quick on the person that doesn't work and double down on the ones who are good. That, that's the hard part, right? Is, you know, I mean, as much as, as cutthroat as people want to think we are, you never want to let someone go. But obviously, a lot of times it's, it's better for that. You know, it's the worst. But, you know, it's better for them. And I mean, everyone needs to go where they're treated best. And so if someone's not cut out for a role in your company, then then they have to go. But uh, I think, again, you know, rather than hiring, I just had a guy yesterday. He, uh, he came to me, another guy who's been around with us for like four years. He's made a fortune in the last four years, has a couple hundred million dollars. And he says, you know, I'm going to stay in the U.S. I'm going to pay the taxes, but I want an asset protection structure. And I want a place where I can hire people where I'm not going to be subject to all these regulations. He said, I just got something from like the unemployment board from a guy who worked for me 12 years ago. I mean, this is what it's like to hire in the U.S. I mean, I remember in California back in 2007, I spent six months. I paid the appropriate taxes for doing that. They were hounding me for years after that. So if nothing else, just make your life easier. You know, in Estonia, they're doing taxes on a postcard or like on an app or something. It's done in three minutes. You know, go to a place like that where life is easier. And I think people are so, again, addicted to like how things work where they're from. I can always tell a failed person or a failed society when they say, well, that's just how we do things here. Because every country does something well. I was just in Serbia for three months. They're, you know, they're very smart people. They're beautiful people. And I love Belgrade. I have a place in Belgrade. But there's, there are people there where it's just like, this is how we do it. Listen, I like the directness. I like a lot of the things that they do. But they're not good at everything. And let's be honest. I mean, the results bear that out. And so I love Serbia. But, you know, there's some things that could be improved. There's things that could be improved in the U.S. I think they're slowly moving in the right direction. The country that you and I are from is moving in the wrong direction. So at least they have that. But this idea that, you know, what I talk about in Georgia, for example, the country of Georgia, when I first went there, they were putting things online and digitalizing and making things so easy to everything. And they wanted to be great. And now they're kind of stepping back a little bit. But, you know, they said, what does it take to be great? There's not going to be any this is how we do it. Dubai, the same thing. They bring in all the experts. You do this great. You do that great. Let's put it all together and be the best. But it's so rare to see that. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your nomad capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.